Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. This video is part two in our series where we're building some terrain to help celebrate the launch of Battlefront Miniatures' new book, Battle of the Bulge American. In the last video, I decided that I was going to build a European village so that I would have a spot to use my new models from the Battle of the Bulge American set for Flames of War. To do this, I took some of the buildings from the Battlefield in a Box model series and prepared them by repainting them. I set them up on bases as well and got them ready to form up in my village. In this video, we're moving on to the next and final part where we prepare the bases and the surroundings in the village. Last time we left off after cutting the bases to fit the buildings themselves. Now we need to return to finishing the bases. I started by taking them and soaking them in a tub of water. This was to help peel the paper layers off the surface of each of the sheets of foam core. After this had soaked for a time, I then took my fingers and simply just rubbed the paper off the top. I then left these to dry overnight so that the paper and the foam didn't get distorted by being worked with while it was wet. This seemed like a good time to start work on the fences, so I got out some fences I had 3D printed previously and started to dry brush them with increasingly lighter shades of red. I started with a dark brownie red, moved up through a medium red, and then finished off by adding increasingly more flesh colored paint to the mix and going at it with a heavy dry brush until I thought I had a suitable brick like look. When I was happy I pulled out my weathering pencils and picked out certain bricks with slightly different colors. In some spots I used tan colors, in other spots I used darker reds or browns, and then I blended these out with a moist brush. This just created more of a variety of colors to make the fence look more realistic. By now the bases were suitably ready for sculpting, so I put them down flat on a surface, measured out half centimeter by half centimeter squares on them to form the appearance of brickwork, and went ahead and scored the pattern into the surface using a pen and a metal ruler. As a focal point to array the buildings around, I decided to use one of Battlefields in the Box, really excellent cobblestone village squares. Previously I had undercoated this in the previous video, so it was already sprayed a matte black. To help prepare it, I went ahead and gave it a quick dry brush of dark brown. When this was done, I added more and more grey to the mix, re-dry brushing it up over several layers until I finally finished with pure white. This gave the cobblestones a suitably rocky look and I decided to add some weathering and to change up the visual interest a little bit with my weathering pencils. I got out a series of different colors and worked them into the bricks by moistening the tips of the pencils and just rubbing it on. When this had partially dried I went back to a moist paintbrush and blended these out. Going back to the bases, I decided it was time to start adding the buildings and the other details. I got out some matte Mod Podge, painted it heavily down onto the bottoms of the buildings and the bottoms of the fences, and stuck them down to the base. While I was at it, I knew I wanted to have some naturalized areas on some of the bases, so I went and roughly cut out some extra chunks of foam core, peeled away at them and worked at them with some files until they were suitably rounded mounds and glued those down on top of the base as well. I then finished off by giving all of the bases a general coat of watered down Mod Podge. This would be required to add extra strength and rigidness to the bases themselves so they didn't warp at later stages of the process. By the next morning the Mod Podge had dried so I went back to work on the base. 
The first thing I did was get out some masking tape and go around the edges of the raised areas on the base, mainly the sections I decided that would be naturalized. This would just be to help smooth off the gradient between the base itself and any raised portions. When this was done, it was time to start applying the grit. I decided to do this, as always, with the rubbing alcohol method. I started by pouring out some matte Mod Podge, mixing it with a little black paint, and watering it down slightly. Then I spread this on the base, on any spot where I would expect to find dirt. That would be on the raised naturalized areas, and in the corners around the building, and a spot where I decided to build a yard behind the fence. When this was spread, I sprinkled down a mixture of sand and kitty litter over top of this. I use this mixture all the time. It's about 80% sandbox sand to about 20% kitty litter. When this had been layered on, but while the glue was still wet, I went on to using the rubbing alcohol. I poured out some rubbing alcohol, mixed it with a little black ink, and then soaked it down over top of the grit and glue mixture. While it was still soaking, I then went back to the initial mixture of Mod Podge and black paint, watered it down enough so that I could pick it up in a pipette, and applied a thick layer of that down over top. I then left this for 24 hours to dry. With the glue and grit mixture dried, it was now time to start painting the base, and I prepared the base in exactly the same way as I did the cobblestones. I started with brown and highlighted it with increasingly lighter gray colors until I worked away at it with some pure white. I also took a mid-tone of a tan paint and worked that into the areas where I expected to find dirt, such as the naturalized spots. When applying a lot of dry brushing, you sometimes get results that are pretty chalky and it downplays the contrast in your details. So I went and got out my enamel-based Tamiya panel liner, in this case black, and ran it into the cracks and all of the spaces in and around the cobblestones. This process is fairly time consuming, but it really helps the individual details stand out. With this complete, I got out my weathering pencils again, moistened the tips of various colors, and went back and applied them to individual cobblestones on the surface of each base. I blended these out with a moist brush. This brought me to the last painting step in the project, and that was going in and picking out some of the individual details. This would include the fallen lumber, and some of the pieces of masonry that I wanted to make distinctly different colors. I used some red tones similar to those I used on the fences, and some shades of brown to do this. After I had added this in spots here and there, I felt that it had built visual interest significantly, and I went on to the landscaping. I started by using Mod Podge to glue down some store-bought grass clumps, and pieces of lichen. I mainly focus these on the naturalized areas or into the corners where greenery might grow or where there might be gardens around the houses. When this was finished, I took out some extra trees I had built for a previous build and glued them down to the surface of the base. With this complete, I could move on to the static grass. I spread down some watered down Mod Podge in spots where I thought the grass would look good, generally in clumps, and then I went ahead and sprinkled it on. Because I wanted the area to look suitably abandoned or abused, I stuck mainly with a yellowish color that looked more or less like the grass was dead. I did work in some greens here and there to increase the variety. As a last step, and to make it look like the area had been lived in and had some human activity in it, I went into my bits box and found some extra wooden barrels and some 55-gallon drums that I had painted previously. I took them and glued them down in various positions around the model. When the glue had dried, 
the model was now more or less finished, so I gave it a couple quick coats of matte varnish. This was to protect the work so far from the rigors of wear and tear during gameplay, and to help the static grass and some of the scenery details stay stuck down. And with that, this project was finished. Now I had a complete European village centered around a quaked cobblestone square. There are plenty of specific small details to make the models look like the area has been lived in and that people are interacting with it. There's also lots of different details to add color and make it stand out. Now all I need to do is get out my American troops and some of the really cool new bulge American tanks, get them ready, and get playing some games of Flames of War. Well, that's it for this episode. Make sure you keep your eyes out for some of the awesome new models that are coming up for the new release of the Bulge Americans. As a player that likes to play US forces in Flames of War, I can hardly wait. Especially since, as you know, I love painting tanks. And I can hardly wait to get some of those awesome new tanks, in particular, the Pershing, on the table. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for more upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature. Thank you.